All right, let's just jump right into it. As we know, there's always a surprise in, uh, when coaches get fired, and um, today's that day where it happens with the regular season now in the books, and Brian Flores and the Dolphins is exactly that surprise. What happened there? What gives there? Well, and that is a stunner, and dysfunctional teams do dysfunctional things. Look, I take it back to the base level, and really you take it to the top of the organization. Steven Ross, owner of the team, absentee owner, doesn't live, doesn't work in South Florida, and doesn't really have his finger on the pulse of the organization the way he should. And it's a situation that becomes rife for turf battles, internal struggles, and acrimony between coaching staff and front office. And it sure sounds like there's a lot of that there. They're putting out the word that Brian Flores wasn't masterful at relationships with people like GM Chris Greer or quarterback Tua Tonga Vailoa. Look, when you pluck a guy off of the Bill Belichick tree, you're not getting him for relationships. You're getting him because he can win football games. And you have to accept the fact that even if these guys insist they're not the same as Belichick at some fundamental level, they are the same as Belichick because they've seen how he conducts business. And that's the problem. If you don't win early, then you need to worry about whether or not somebody is conspiring to get you out of there or the people that you're making upset because you're trying to do things in a Belichickian way are fed up and they want to move on. And I just feel like something like that has trickled into this, that Brian Flores isn't a guy who's going to play the political game. He's just trying to win football games. And meanwhile, other forces in the organization bring him down and make the case to Stephen Ross as they whisper in his ear in the luxury suite while Flores is coaching the team that this guy needs to go, that this is all his fault. I, I, I think there's plenty of blame to go around, but I think most people would say Brian Flores, given that he didn't have the, the, the best players by far of his peers, he's done pretty well with what he's had. So that made it very surprising. There's always more to the story behind the scenes, but I just feel like that entire setup where Ross is just a, a, a fly-in for the games and go back to New York type of an owner, it, it's, it's not – an ideal way by far to run an NFL organization. Well, he knows enough that he says it's not about Tua uh, or Deshaun Watson. um, And so what, how how does the quarterback situation play into what happened and what happens next? Do you think I'm told that Flores didn't want Deshaun, that it was all one big distraction from what they were trying to do. And look at what happened when the trade deadline came and went. That's when they started winning football games because Ross wanted Deshaun. Ross wanted Joe Burrow. The Bengals wouldn't trade down from the top spot a couple of years ago. Then Ross wanted Tua. He got Tua. Then Ross wanted Deshaun, and he's going to keep pushing for Deshaun Watson. I don't see why he would change his mind. What did we see from Tua over the balance of the season that makes us think he's a potential franchise quarterback? They're desperate to get another Dan Marino or someone who is in that same category as among the best quarterbacks in football. And, and Ross – Barnstorms in, says what he'd like to have happen, pushes for certain things, but he's not there grinding away every single day with everyone else. So none of it surprises me. And I, I really don't think this means that Tua wins and he's the guy moving forward. I still think Ross is going to push for Deshaun Watson or someone else if he thinks there's some other alternative to Tua that's out there that can help him get the Dolphins to where he wants them to be. So are you saying your best of your knowledge and and, uh, and insight into this is that Ross is a fly-in game day fly-out guy but then flies in figuratively to make such a crucial mandate as to who the quarterback is and who they're drafting? Is that it's how it's not basically? a mandate. See, one of the privileges of being a billionaire is you never have to <laughs> give orders. You don't have to. What, you just you, There's a way you make your preferences known. And the people who are working for you who – hope to continue working for you will be paying attention to what the boss likes it's like Costanza in the calzone when steinbrenner wants a calzone Costanza's is getting him a calzone every single day until steinbrenner decides he likes something else i mean that that that's that's what most owners will do so then they can say oh no i'm not involved i don't i don't tell my people what to do no you don't tell them what to do but you make it clear what you would like them to do and if they're smart they'll do it mm. And I guess is that why Greer stays? Because the the, the conversation of, of Tua over Herbert is one that uh, still resonates today, even though both are out of the playoffs again. You know, so well, Greer's got the cover. You know, uh, along the lines of, hey, I you know I didn't want Tua. You're the one that wanted him, boss. Uh, I mean, it's it's always an awkward conversation to have. But <laughs> I, I'm always I'm always 
troubled when one goes and one stays, regardless of whether it's GM goes and coach stays or coach goes and GM stays. I believe there should be equal accountability in a football operation. And any time one survives and one goes, especially when you look at the team and say, they're really not in that category of teams that we think are kind of lost their way and, and need a reset. Any time one stays and one goes, it's a sign of dysfunction. It's a sign of a power struggle. And it's a sign that there are different standards of accountability being applied when everyone should be under the same mandate. We all survive and thrive or we all fail. Because if you, if you know there's a path to I can save my ass and I can blame it on someone else, what happens when adversity strikes? People start blaming someone else in order to cover their own butts. And when the owner's not there every single day, it's easier to pull that off. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.